legacy was there from the word go. And probably the core legacy of what we're trying to achieve is, is to revitalise this great Shakespeare collection um, that, Birmingham, that Birmingham has, just so that lots more people know about it. Not just Shakespeare enthusiasts, but really broad ranges of different types of people. It's counter the counterbalance. So if you're doing scanning a book, obviously, as you move through the book, it automatically. The Shakespeare spot. collection catalogue was um, a set of seven volumes of very tatty books. Brilliant, but completely inaccessible. You had to know that they exist and come here. So a big part of the project was to literally digitise all of those books, um, import them into the library's cataloguing system, so they're now available for anybody. So we're just working through Romeo and Juliet and the photographs that are in, the, uh, in here today are from 1958 RSC. So we found some nice black and white photos like this. Some surprise me, you know, all the material they've got hidden away here that we're uncovering, so. It's been interesting with the early photos, especially seeing how grand some of the productions are on a scale that would still look impressive today. It's interesting material to work with. Um, and like I say, it's a useful experience. You never know when it's gonna come in handy in the future. So the library don't generally have volunteers, they might have one or two people come in, um, but for us we needed to have volunteers um, working with us. So hopefully the library will take that on, that will be another legacy of the project as well. To this project and how to reach other people of learning and kind of spread out. Um, I started in digitalising the collections, so I've been working with Catalot, um, with the archives, and then I moved, I did one of the folio days, so I went to Selly Manor um, and volunteered at one of the folio days. And then for the last month since the exhibition opened, I've been volunteering the exhibitions. And I just knew that I needed to improve my experience and improve my skills with the, the public. Um, so I've, I've had a great time, I've met so many people. You, you get presented with a box that's full of envelopes, envelopes that have probably not been opened for 60 years. And you are the first person looking at that in 60 years. I think it was, might have been Einstein or some famous scientist said, we're all just a grain of sand on the uh, beach of intellect. And so if we can make a contribution as a grain of sand, which is what I think I will have done, then hopefully one day when everybody's work is put together, this will enable the public and others to have a better digital source when they want to look things up. I've made the great collections of the world much more aware of, of this collection. So the Folger um, are much more aware of it. They've done a podcast with Adrian. We've worked with an American, a brilliant American associate, Catherine Shire at the University of Minnesota, who's also brought, brought it to, to, to the attention of American scholarship. Um, we got some stuff on the census of early Shakespearean books uh, which is in the library. So, in a sense, we've been putting a bit of a girdle around the earth, re re really, to, li to, to link, to use the Shakespeare phrase, to link um, um, this, this great but rather forgotten collection to some of the great collections. So, the summer school programme um, was kind of not originally part of the project development plan. Um, Nicola and I designed a programme that was a week long um, for people aged 18 to 25 in Birmingham who faced barriers to working in libraries, archives or heritage. Um, and they spent a week with us, they shadowed me, they shadowed Nicola, they helped build exhibitions, they helped plan for folio events, they designed activities for the, um, the family days, they had a full tour of the archives, we worked very closely with the archives team, catalogued and transcribed archive material, digitised material, designed social media posts and also did their own research projects. When I say kind of one of the biggest legacies is it can be done, um, there is now a model for doing that. We've, we've worked with the archives team. I don't know if they'd have the resources to do that in the future, but even several years down the line, that model exists. We have touched some communities and it would be really interesting to sort of see long term, I don't know how that we, we won't be able to measure this, but what is the significance on the mural that is now in you know, a primary school in Spark Hill, you know, those sorts of things. How you know, will some of those kids go to university to study Shakespeare? So what I'm really hoping 
both with the organisations and community partners and volunteers, that we've built those relationships and we're now giving them that concrete information, that how-to guide that we can't give you money, but we can, we've can. we shown you how to use this collection, how to access it. We're setting up those relationships with the archives team. I think this project has been as successful as it has been because people can see it's it's about more than any one individual and it's about something else it's about a collection which is real which belongs to the people it's about a neglected achievement that and i think people have really a lot of people i've spoken to at least have really have really warmed to that and it's been a pleasure as well it's you know it's, it, it becomes embarrassing to be pushing pushing yourself and, and and so forth we will have to do it but but uh, you know and obviously nobody we're not saints we're not you know every everybody got something out of the project I hope I hope everyone on the team did I certainly did um, but it's there's been a certain degree of um, I hope generosity selflessness inspired by the generosity and selflessness of the founders of the the collection which has been animating and, and sustaining